It's that time of year again, it's FRC competition season. For those who are unaware, FRC stands for First Robotics Competition, and is a high school robotics competition where students create, build, and program their own bots in just two months. From January 9th up until the first competition that happens in early March, the students must build a completely new robot for each year's game, this year's being called Crescendo. It's music themed, so the orange rings that give you points are called notes. They give you those points when you put them into these things called speakers, or these things called amps. If you get two notes into the amp, then you can amplify, giving you double points when you put notes into the speaker. Crazy, right? You can also climb this chain for three more points at the end. And this is 1310's bot, the Notorious PID. It has two arms here and here, with an intake here and a shooter here. When you shoot into the amp, it's like this, and when you shoot into the speaker, it's like this. It also has climbs on either side that you climb with. So do you see an issue with this? No. What about if I compare it to last year's robot? It had one arm that extended with one claw at the end. And that was it. And even still, we didn't finish it particularly early. Meaning that this, you know, thing with the added complexity of swerve drive was finished about as late as you expect, i.e. three days before the competition. This means that our programming team, who had been working on Notorious without any testing, had to just throw the code on there with minimal experience, which also means the drive team didn't have much practice with it either. So, you know, it wasn't a great start, but it was time to go to our first competition, the Centennial Qualifier in 1310's home city of Toronto. Hey guys, we're in the pits, we're chilling. it's almost before comp, we're so excited, we can't wait for today. We had the very first match after opening ceremonies, so we didn't have to wait long. We were pumped to see what the day had in store, and it started off pretty okay. The note you start with is scored, and afterwards the robot. Well, it spins about 90 degrees and then deploys the intake. Not sure what exactly it was supposed to do, but that definitely was not it. We then end auto and are down on points, and it stays that way the rest of the match. We intake a note here, but it gets stuck, and our climb also fails leading us to a first loss, 9-27. Not amazing, but also not that big of a problem. The intake worked, and only needed a small change before our next match. And yep, this one worked out much better. Our intake was working, the drive was going well, and we even climbed. It was going great. First time climbing, ever, which is really fun. Our last match, match seven, which I'm gonna count as our first match. First one didn't happen. First one didn't count, okay? Second time was the charm. We scored, I think, three notes. Three notes, and we climbed, which was crazy because some of our other team members couldn't score, so it was really cool that we could score. We were starting to have good feelings about this competition. That was until we came back and saw something that was extremely troubling. The arm was broken. The link broke, and our arm is essentially disabled and cannot do anything. So we are currently trying to add a plate onto the thing so it can align with the source drop and land a note inside of the robot perfectly. But without that thing, which we're trying to build onto it, it just lands like on top of the robot and doesn't do anything. So which happened, what happened last round is that we tried doing that, and we tossed it, and it just sat on top of the robot and did nothing. So we just played defense with this match. Somehow, either on the field or during testing, a gear in the main Link gearbox broke, meaning that we had no way to intake off the ground. We weren't going to be able to fix it either. That gear was a special one, and so we had no extras. But you know what? We don't go down that easily. We used our amazing design and build skills and decided to duct tape some extra plastic to our arm in order to make source pickup an option. This changes our strategy, as now we have to go all the way down the field in order to get notes. But, you know what, at least we could still score. It's not the prettiest solution, but it did end up working. The next three matches were ups and downs, as every time we won, a loss followed. At least until match 30, where we then lost four times in a row. So going into match 52, we were pretty down, and really needed a win to boost our spirits. At the start of this match, we did exactly what we wanted to. 
get out of the way quickly so that 188 could do their entire auto while still getting two points for leaving the starting area. Unfortunately, 188 missed their first shot, and their second one never came out, leaving us at a one point deficit. We then pick up the pace right after, firing the note we started with and rushing to the source to get our second. At this point, the drive team had had a little bit of practice with the robot, so only after a few short seconds we got the game piece and scored it, evading some defense too. But then you can start to notice that both of our alliance partners have completely stopped moving, and it seems just hopeless. Two more cycles, and even still they haven't moved an inch. And then, about halfway through the next cycle, 188 and 9659 both regain consciousness and manage to park under the stage for one point each. It looks pretty bad, but then out of nowhere we gain 10 points in penalties, and they count up the points gained from the stage. At the end of it, they finally revealed the scores and... We lost by two points. Because of penalties. It really sucked and while still trying to figure out who or what caused this penalty, they changed the score. They had taken off the five points, meaning that we had actually won the match. We all breathed a sigh of relief as we won our last match as well, finishing qualifications at a respectable 16th place. Now 16th place doesn't sound all too bad, but it's actually a pretty poor position to be in. FRC events happen in two parts. First is qualifiers, which we just did, and playoffs. In order to pick the two bots that will be on your alliance for playoffs, we do alliance selection. Whoever is ranked first in playoffs will most likely pick number two, and three will pick four, five will pick six, and so on. Now, this sounds pretty unfair. It means that one will be with two, and then they can pick another incredible bot, right? Well, it doesn't end up like that, because alliance eight actually gets first pick for the third robot on your alliance. So. Alliance 8 will most likely end up being 15, 16, and 17, which is still a pretty good alliance overall. Now, it's not where you really want to be though, because Alliance 1 and 2 have such good bots that they mostly just trample through everybody else, especially in these earlier competitions where there's an even bigger gap between, you know, the first and the second ranked robot. Well, how did we do in Alliance Selection? Well, we got picked by the 7th Alliance under Captain 9262, the Humberside Huskies. It was nice since the Huskies are only 2 years old, and our team, and especially mentors, helped them a lot so that they would be ready for this event. We then picked a pretty nasty defense bot in 6999, Cyber Squad. Although, it didn't look too good going into playoffs. We were first up against the 2nd Alliance and were not very surprised when we lost and moved down to the lower bracket. The next match didn't look too much easier though. We were up against Alliance 6 who had some pretty powerful teams in Pink Titans and the Robo Devils. Unfortunately, even after working our butts off for this competition, it didn't go our way. We lost by 14 points, and were knocked out first out of everybody there. We still did really well though. Considering everything, I mean, our link broke, our we only had just tried amp scoring, we had finished this robot still only 5 days earlier at the end of the competition. I'm very proud of our team for getting as far as we did, and it looks like we'll be doing much better at our next event, North Bay. So stay tuned, and check back in then. Maybe we'll even surprise ourselves.